For thousands of years, humanity's understanding of the cosmos has evolved, shifting from a worldview where Earth was the center of all existence to the realization of our modest position in the vast universe. This transformation from the geocentric model, where Earth stands at the center, to the heliocentric model, where the Sun takes center stage, has been a remarkable journey. At the heart of this change was Nicholas Copernicus, whose revolutionary ideas paved the way for modern astronomy. Let's delve into this fascinating transition. Anaximander, a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher, proposed a geocentric universe in the 6th century BCE with the Earth at its center. Invisible wheels surrounded the Earth, through which concealed fires representing celestial bodies like the Sun and Moon were visible. The Pythagoreans, observing eclipses and the zodiac, deduced the Earth's circular shape. By the 4th century BCE, this geocentric view dominated Greek cosmology. Plato envisioned a stationary Earth with stars and planets circling it in spheres. Eudoxus added a mathematical dimension, while Aristotle detailed concentric transparent spheres around a central Earth. These spheres, made of an indestructible ether, moved uniformly, rotating celestial bodies around Earth. He also organized elements into layers around the Earth, with the heaviest, Earth itself, in the center, followed by water, air, and fire. Outside these layers, solid ether spheres contained celestial entities. Aristotle's system also introduced the prime mover, signifying a force initiating all universal motion. Supporting the geocentric theory were observations like the lack of shifting of the stars due to stellar parallax, suggesting stars were motionless, and the consistent luminosity of Venus, incorrectly attributed to its constant distance from Earth. These views persisted until telescopic advancements provided clearer insights. The Eudoxian-Aristotelian model faced challenges, notably the changing luminosities of Mercury, Mars and Jupiter, and the retrograde motion, where planets like Mars and Jupiter appeared to reverse direction before moving forward again. This contradicted the principle of uniform circular motion. Ptolemy, in the 2nd century CE, refined this model in his work, the Almagest. While maintaining Earth at the universe's centre, he introduced the concepts of deference and epicycles. Deference are off-centre circles explaining seasonal length variations, while epicycles nested within deference account for retrograde motion by acting as a wheel within a wheel. However, discrepancies like varying sizes of retrograde loops persisted. To rectify this, Ptolemy introduced the equant, a point from which a planet's epicycle seemed to move uniformly. Despite its imperfections, Ptolemy's model dominated for over a millennium in various civilizations. In the Middle Ages, the geocentric model became pivotal, merging with Christian theology. This was part of a broader resurgence in classical knowledge during the 13th century. Figures like St. Thomas Aquinas emphasized the balance between faith and reason, leading to the widespread acceptance of the Aristotelian Ptolemaic cosmic model. The geocentric model was preferred because it resonated with Christian views of humanity's central role in divine creation. The division of the universe into heavens and earth with earth central underscored this belief. Moreover, Aristotle's prime mover, which directed the cosmos, was seen as the Christian God. The outermost celestial sphere became synonymous with Christian heaven. Thus, questioning the geocentric perspective was viewed not just as scientific dissent, but as heresy. In the 16th century, Nicolaus Copernicus crafted a heliocentric model, building on the insights of classical astronomers and drawing from the Moraga school and Islamic philosophers. By 1514, he had summarized his ideas in Commentariolus, a treatise that circulated among peers and presented seven foundational principles of his heliocentric theory. These principles stated, The universe lacks a singular center for all orbits. Earth's center is only central to the lunar orbit. The sun is near the universe's center. Earth's distance from the sun is negligible compared to the stars explaining why the parallax is not observed in the stars. 
Earth's daily rotation explains the apparent daily motion of the immobile stars. Earth's annual orbit around the Sun accounts for the Sun's perceived yearly cycle. Planet's apparent retrograde motion results from Earth's movement around the Sun. By 1532, Copernicus had nearly finished De Revolutionibus Orbium Coelestium, elaborating on his principles with detailed computations. He posited that Mercury and Venus orbit between Earth and the Sun, explaining their varying appearances. They appear full yet small when opposite the Sun, and crescent-shaped but larger when nearer to Earth. This model also explained the retrograde motion of planets like Mars and Jupiter due to Earth's moving observational standpoint. Copernicus delayed publishing his work, fearing church backlash. Only near his death in 1542 was it sent for publication. The telescope's invention and continuous astronomical discoveries debunked the long-standing belief that Earth was the universe's centre. The geocentric model, which was previously more or less successfully employed for planetary positions, eclipse predictions and explaining astronomical events, was eventually overthrown by the advancing knowledge of the 17th century.